Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's presentation on step number two of the scientific method. Today we're going to talk about research and researching your question. It's going to be really hard to understand this before you actually try to go and do it. Now, first of all, you may be going, uh, Mr. C, what's up with the get up? Boom! Colorado Rockies. I'm actually going on a class field trip today to see a Rockies game. So I'm dressed in the garb, but I'm always working. I'm always teaching. So I'm shooting lessons today anyways. So, uh, so I apologize if I'm a little unprofessionally dressed. Uh, but go Rockies. Okay, so before we jump into this, you can go ahead and ask why this is important. And there's really a couple of good reasons. Uh, the first and most important, honestly, the research you do for your scientific question is going to drive the entire the entire process that comes after this, right? You're going to come up with a hypothesis. You're going to design experiments. You're going to you're going to actually perform these experiments and gather data. And what you do in your research drives all of it. And it really helps you to know what you're talking about. Uh, it's going to set some expectations for your experiment, right? The more research you do, the more educated you are on the topic, the more successful your in experiment as a whole, your scientific method. The process you take as a whole is going to be more successful if you do good quality research and take your time, right? Be judicious. Make sure you're finding things that are important, that are relevant, and you're thinking about them, putting them together, and mixing them up in your brain uh, as you go through the steps that come after this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and try it. Now, I'm not going to model real research for you. I'm just going to talk about it. Um, and the first thing you're going to need is something to take notes with. You're either going to need a notebook, you're going to need a computer or an iPad, something you can write relevant information from. Because when you start doing research, you, have, you are going to wind up with so much stuff just paragraph after paragraph after web page after book of stuff, right? And if you keep it all, if you take it all, you're never going to be able to do anything with it. So you need a notebook, okay? You need something that is going to let you write down the most relevant things in an organized way, okay? Now, I'm just going to use my little scratch pad that I have on the computer, Okay, but if you have a notebook or a piece of paper, my students have a scientific notebook, or if you want to use a piece of technology or a piece of hardware, that's great. Okay, um, and I'm just going to, we're going to use the same question that we used in the last lesson, which is, if you put a white carnation in water that has red food coloring in it, what's going to happen? It's a great scientific question, and there's a lot of different things you could research. Now, my students go to the internet. <clears throat> there's lots of good stuff on the internet, and there's lots of garbage on the internet, and it's your responsibility as a scientist to find some relevant stuff. If you don't understand what you're doing or what you're seeing, well, then you need to, you need to research deeper. I will give you uh, an example of that. One of the first things that I found on Google about this topic, and one of the first things you're going to see them talk about, are vascular plants, okay? The word vascular. Okay, now most of my students have no idea what that means, and you probably don't either. You're going to have to do more research on what a vascular plant is and how that could have anything to do with your question. Spoiler alert, it does. Okay, you find out that vascular plants, I'm just going to do a little subset of notes here, are plants with tubes. Okay, and they use those tubes to move water, right? Okay, and you'll also find out that the water that comes in through the roots is transported to the leaves and it's transported to the flowers in these vascular plants, right? I'm just modeling some quick little note taking here, okay? Now, I wouldn't just use the internet. I would use books too. Every time I was going through the scientific method, I would go to the library, find books on this. You're going to find great pictures. It's going to be organized for you. There's not as much advertising, or there's no advertising really in books. It's not as confusing, and it's a little more scholarly. But beyond that, really, you got to find people. I'm going to draw a little picture of a person, like a, like a very intelligent-looking person. When I think intelligent, I think glass, like a professor, right? Hmm... Some, somebody very scholarly, pardon my art, um, right? You want to talk to people. 
experts, find teachers, older brothers and sisters, your parents, call people in the community, talk to the librarian, ask them about your topic. You're gonna get more relevant information talking to one person who knows what they're doing in five minutes than you would doing three hours of research on the internet. You can also look to videos, okay? Research on YouTube, see what you can find. Um, you know, a lot of it might be too complicated, too confusing, but if you're careful, if you're judicious, okay, that means if you're careful about what you look at and what you take notes on, you're going to find some really good stuff on YouTube as well. Uh, and that's kind of like talking to a person. You just can't ask them questions. The reason it's really good to talk to actual people is because you can ask them questions. Okay, so I modeled a little bit of note taking, right? When you're doing research, you're going to do this for way longer. I expect my kids to research topics for hours, okay? They do a little bit at school. I have them do a little bit at home, right? They take books home if they don't have the internet. Uh, uh, we, we Google people to call and they make phone calls from home, right? I would have, um, I would have them look up uh, like careers for people who work with plants, right? Maybe uh, call like even a flower shop for this question, right? You could call someone at a flower shop and say, hey, I'm doing a science project and I have a question, okay? And just make sure that you're taking notes about lots of really important, relevant things that they say. You're going to use these notes and use what you learn in your research step to make a hypothesis in your next step and then design an experiment. And it's really, really, really important. Okay, so make sure you spend time on this topic. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go any deeper into this. Okay, so um, please uh, use what you learned here, apply it to the scientific process. Uh, we're going to talk really quickly, briefly about some really important things that we learned. You gotta have something to take notes with first. You're gonna use a lot of different sources. Uh, the internet's cool, but you wanna make sure that you're using books and more than anything else, I think, you find the most relevant information, and I think it's the most fun, to talk to real people, to find experts, people who know what they're talking about. And right, I'm not saying go find a kindergartner and ask them. Maybe you could, right? I'm saying find somebody who knows what they're talking about, all right? And I want you to try this. Uh, I think this is going to be fun, all right? I'm going to give you a scientific question, and I want you to do like 15 to 20 minutes of research. If all you have is the internet, do some internet research. Uh, if you have access to a phone and you can call some experts on the topic, uh, do that too. Or if you're near a library, find some books. Um, but make sure you're taking notes, all right? Because that's an exercise that you really need to do. The question is, what would happen if you gave a plant only salt water for two weeks? Hmm, interesting question. Think of some ways where you could find some relevant information on that topic. Okay, all right, I hope this helped in your endeavors with the scientific method. I will see you in episode three where we talk about creating a hypothesis. Um, so yeah, go Rockies. I'll see you next time.